Good morning, brother. There was uh, there's wonderful truth. Few few messages. Uh, sorry, a few messages back. Do you remember when we were talking about Peter and uh, his 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 being questioned three times? Do you love me? by the Lord and Peter said thou knowest all things you know that I love thee and so a few times before Peter's actions had shown what some might consider to be unloving towards God Peter certainly can't love this man Jesus He's denying him openly. He's even cussing up and down. <laughs> I don't know that he was cussing, but he certainly he certainly swore. He certainly though his speech bereath him uh, because of the accent he had it may have always also been that he had a little bit of that a little bit of that that other accent as far as language goes I'm looking forward to finishing that uh, sermon you left me about the use of our language but oh those are always tough ones the tongue is a fire a deadly poison full of unruliness and evil yikes <laughs> those are always fun <clears throat> and universal Anybody can hear a message like that and go, yep, uh-huh. Where was I? Oh, yeah, so... Peter's actions had not shown that he loved the Lord, and so... Wisely, Peter, at this moment, doesn't appeal to his actions. He appeals to what the Lord knows of him and he appeals to his own love towards the Lord this is a this is a wonderful truth because I believe that this is one of the most important teachings a Christian ought to know and be firm in that our position in Christ is all about what God knows of us and our love towards Him. And again, here's where the legalist, here's where the standards maker will say, Wow! Jesus himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And it's true he said that. Let's just always be mindful of his audience, of the context, and what he's really addressing at that moment. Because again, here's the Lord talking to Peter of his love towards him. Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, <laughs> shoots right back at the Lord with an appeal of what he knows. Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And of his great love towards the Lord. At a time when his not keeping of the commandments is being brought to light. So, what is this truth? Well, it resonates through the whole of scriptures. Now the just shall live by faith. Well, that's the first time faith is mentioned in all the Bible. The just shall live by faith. A few more times in the Old Testament. For by grace are you saved through faith. 
that not of ourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. As ye, Colossians 2, 6, as ye therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So, what is this overarching truth of the scriptures? Well, it's faith. So again, Peter appeals to what the Lord knows of him to his, his own love towards the Lord in spite of his deeds and in spite of his actions. So here's what happens in the standard keepers. Men spent some time walking this walk. He's a saved man. He has that assurance, or at least maybe he had it, because he walked peacefully with the Lord. But circumstances and, 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 and trials and, and di different things have entered into his life, and, and he's, he's drawn back a little. He's not reading the word. He's not praying to God. He's not wearing a three-piece suit when he goes to church, if he goes at all, with any sort of regularity. His to-dos have fallen by the wayside. The to-dos that often don't have any scripture backing to them, but fall into the category of standards. Standard, you must read your Bible through once a year. The standard, you must pray before every meal, before bed. You must wear your three-piece suit, be in church three to thrive, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, free thrive. <laughs> I'm not a crook. <laughs> you must do all these things to please God. And the preacher of standards by righteousness will call these things to question. You wonder why God's not working in your life? Well, have you read your Bible today? Bless God. Have you prayed to him four times today? Bless God. Are you in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Bless God. If you're not, well, maybe that is why God is not working in your life. Now, if you're of certain camps, you'll say, you need to come down to this old-fashioned altar and do business with God. If you're of other camps, you won't even offer a challenge of repentance anywhere. You'll just end with an hymn. You'll go back to your self-righteousness. But either way, Standards are brought as this measure of your love towards God. Because, well, if ye love me, keep my commandments, say Jesus. Oh, really? Where in the Word do you have the command to read your Bible through one time in a year? Where in the Bible do you find the command to wear your three-piece suit when you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Or in the Bible do you find the Lord commanding anybody of how off they ought to pray? Who except for one? 
pray without ceasing. And that's interesting. So, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Now, if my walk in Christ has to do with my to-dos, my prayer, uh-oh, my Bible reading, uh-oh, my attendance to church at the, at the prescribed frequency of my congregation, uh-oh. So walk ye in him are those things, and there's other to-dos, of course, standards that we set up. For ourselves ask yourselves are all these things as you received Christ did I receive the gift of God by reading my Bible did I receive the gift of God by praying certain times did I receive the gift of God by attending a service dressing right This truth that needs to be grasped by all of us, and I'm talking to myself here, I'm, I'm talking to you, brother, is that we received Christ without the deeds of the law. We received Christ not by works, lest any man should boast. We receive the gift of Christ as grace given for a punishment that we certainly deserve. That's mercy. We receive gift. We received the gift of Christ. We did not deserve it. That is how we are to walk as Christians. Walk as a recipient of a gift. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk believing. Walk trusting on our Lord and Savior. When we begin to understand this, we naturally spiritually begin to realize the great detriment that these standards are causing to the Christian now Peter had in the past done some things wrong he had denied the Lord openly which some would say, well, if you deny Jesus, of course you're not saved. Peter was a blood-bought child of the king, though. And so when Jesus came to him and asked him, do you love me? Perhaps thinking back to the things Peter had done previous, all Peter had was, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. He appealed to what God knew of him, and he appealed to what God had done in him. Peter, in that moment, had complete access to the grace and mercy of God. Now, this was all in spite of his actions that had gone in the not-so-distant past which Jesus was now perhaps in a way reminding him of. What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Let me try to bring this together. If we allow ourselves to consider 
if the Lord is not recognizing our love towards Him because we're not following to-dos and standards that we've conjured up for ourselves that we have determined are the marks of a Christian, we allow ourselves to dwell upon that we are essentially now not walking in the grace of God the same grace that allowed us to receive Jesus in the first place we are now walking in works we are now trusting that we are sanctified by our works and our relationship with God is fully dependent upon our works and for trusting in our works of righteousness when we do succeed we will boast as ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him So rather than, Christian, in this moment now, today, as Jesus now is asking you, in this moment now, do you love me? Please don't begin appealing to your work as a way of Obtaining the favor of God. Or consider for a moment that uh, I'm not really having things go my way. I'm not having God work in my life. There's no favor because I'm not doing such and such and such a thing. What we need to do is get to a point that we understand that the Lord knows us and that He certainly knows that we love Him. Otherwise, what ends up happening is we get in this cycle of feeling defeated for the things we aren't doing. And we get in a cycle of thinking that God's not working in us and through us for the things we're not doing. And we're not walking by faith anymore. We're walking by sight. So here I am maybe in a season where I'm not doing as well as I was six months, a year, five years ago in my Christian walk. Here I am in a position where I'm not achieving as much as I did a year, two years, five years ago in my Christian walk. And yet, and yet, if I'm understanding correctly that my sanctification is a gift come from God, my sanctification is, is, is holy in Him, received by trusting in Him, then I'm growing anyways spite of my lack of deeds. I'm being strengthened anyways in spite of my lack of to-dos being checked off. I'm growing anyways being conformed to the image of the Son I need not despair. For it is God that worketh in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It was his work of salvation and it's going to be his work when any sanctification comes my way. I 
I do understand that there's certain things that we ought not do as Christians. And that's fair. To address those one by one, to try to just get those things out of your life. To not do them because you're a representative of the Father. And when you do such things, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. But we also have to understand that even when we're doing what we ought not do and not doing what we ought do, we still have the promise that God is working in our lives. It bothers me when I get into this cycle of, well, maybe things would go better for me if I was doing this, and maybe things would go better for me if I wasn't doing this, and, 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 and that. But God's As I was saying, it, it, it truly bothers me when I get into this cycle of, well, you know, it, you know, if, if only I was doing this, then things would go better. And maybe if I did more of this or less of that, then, then God would work in my life. I need to remember and remind myself constantly that the Lord knows me. And he knows the new man in me. Lord, you know that I love thee. That new man is inseparable from God. Though I'll often battle with that thought. I'm in Christ and he's in me. And so when the Lord sees me, he sees his son. He sees a joint heir with Christ. He sees a man completely conformed to his image and conforming to his image all at once. He sees his will being fulfilled in me. And so in a moment, in this moment, I certainly always have access to my Father An ability to do his good pleasure because of the grace that is in me because of the gift he's bestowed upon me that I should be his child in spite of the deeds that have even just gone on here's a new moment here's a new opportunity Brother, I don't know if it made any sense. Just, just thoughts I'm having today. <clears throat> Creating standards for ourselves do have a place. I'm not going to deny that. But man, these standards sometimes really destroy any hope of a walk by faith that we may have. And it frustrates me. <clears throat> As I have received the Lord, I need to walk in Him. Hope you're having a good day, brother. Talk to you soon.